I'm going to start first by talking to you guys a little bit about a uh, curandera tradition that I learned about when I was doing some um, investigative reporting on the border. So what I found was that um, in Texas, there has been a lot of undocumented people unable to access health care. And part of that is because if your uh, documents are in transit or transition, what happens is if you've seeked any public services, including health care, your um, documents can be denied. And so in Texas, um, more than nor um, West Texas, 30% of the WIC clinics have closed, and many, many clinics are closing throughout the state. And um, immigrants and undocumented immigrants are unable to access health care. And so the question is, how, who's stepping into the void? So I interviewed a series of curanderas from California, Arizona, Texas, to kind of find out what they're encountering. And what they were talking about was when it comes to cancer, diabetes, stuff like that, if someone comes to them, they tell them, you need to go see a doctor. But that so much that causes that is trauma, depression, and also just feeling unmoored from your sense of place, and particularly unconnected to the actual doctor who sees you, who might not speak the language, who might not take care of you in the way that you were once taken care of. So I'm gonna start kind of talking about a uh, really beautiful healing ceremony I've, I learned from Brenda Salgado, and she's a curandera today in San Leandro. So, the curandera Brenda Salgado has found that many migrant women find healing in the rituals of curanderismo. Brenda is a Nicaraguan American community leader and has worked extensively in nonprofits. She incorporates many types of healing into her style of curanderismo, including a healing ceremony that she learned from a curandera in Xochimilco, Mexico. The ceremony is called the Harmonization of the Roses. Brenda takes 18 roses and brushes them across her patients on 13 points of their body. Wherever the rose petals fall the most symbolizes where the patients are holding most of their trauma. She continues brushing the roses across these women until she uses all 18 roses. Then she engages in a series of platicas and blesses and prays for her patients to let go of any burdens that are not hers to carry. I'm teaching women to learn to be in their dignity, in their power as women, to reclaim their connection to their womb, intuition, their ancestors, and Mother Earth, because we're needed right now, to lead in our communities. We have to do our healing work in order to step into those positions of power. And I think one of the really important things that she didn't mention is that many of the women she's worked with have never been given a bouquet of roses. And they were the, actually the ones out in the field getting those roses. Mm -hmm. So first, before I do this prayer or spell or whatever you're spiritually comfortable with, um, I'd like you to think about letting go of a burden that is not yours to carry and um, you know, an invitation to ground yourself in this home. So I'm just gonna close my eyes and you're welcome to, you don't have to. And I'm just gonna strike it across parts of my body and curanderas usually do more forceful hitting, but you can just touch yourself because sometimes it's important to remember that like you're worth being touched by rose petals. And um, I would invite you to do this at home and see where the petals fall. And so with that, um, this uh, poem is from Hexing the Patriarchy and um, it is dedicated to immigrants and it's called A Prayer for Those Without a Prayer. I remember the Mexican folk Saint Teresa Urea. She was a curandera and folk healer revered for her ability to heal with her hands and to channel the dead to perform miracles. Records show that she healed thousands and was known as Santa Teresa de Cabora. In fact, she was so powerful, the Mexican dictator Porfirio Diaz was afraid of her influence. He banished her to the United States and her followers, the Caboristas, waged a war in her name against tyranny, against patriarchy, against all that breaks the spirit and turns us into dust. Like Teresa, we are all cajitas or vessels of hopes and dreams and human spirit. Let us see these spirits. Let us stand alongside them. Let us support them. Begin. Say this once with your hand on your heart. You will never erase me. You will never erase me. It's a prayer I find myself repeating. 
I think of the undocumented immigrants living in the churches, hidden, the Underground Railroad of today. I think of the people afraid to go to school, to hospitals, or to work for fear of being deported. Say this three times with your eyes closed. You will never destroy us. You will never destroy us. You will never destroy us. The first time, hiss it. The second time, spit it. And the third time, surrender it. Reach down, touch the earth, and whisper to the plants, I belong here. Su espíritu pertenece aquí. We all belong here. Your roots are my roots. Take a handful of soil, make a fist. Think of what earth would be like without the presence of patriarchy, without dueños, without fear, without hate. <sighs> Blow on the soil until there's no anger or rencor left. Fold your hands and pray. Thank you, Teresa. We will never be erased. Um, and these are two poems. One is about that moment when you never know when you'll be connected with your home or the person that you find in home. It's called, When Will I See You Again? Two bodies, two passports apart. In what world are we together? There is no space in the first world or third. Just a groundless future tense of one more day, one more month, one more year. Feels like one more lifetime without you. And this um, is the one poem that kind of goes into the idea of hope. And so for me as a child, the place I found home was at my tia's vanity. And so it's called Vanity. Por mi tia and women who see themselves in her reflection. There are no ugly women, only lazy ones. She tells me, <laughs> sitting, staring, speaking at her vanity. Liquid becomes foundation, becomes powder, becomes shadow, becomes liner, becomes mascara, becomes more liner, becomes lipstick, becomes woman, becomes beautiful, becomes her, becomes me, becomes you. And the bangles she wears stack, like all the unanswerable questions, like, will he love me tonight? And I will see her eyes mist and I will see her go through the motions of happy birthday face. And when she leaves, I will sit at her vanity. I will smell her perfume and her talcum, and I will powder my six-year-old self, and open my eyes and pucker my lips and blow myself a kiss and think, every woman deserves to believe she's beautiful. Woo. Thank you.